Hello people. For my first video here on my new channel, The Odyssey Project, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show my collection of movie novelizations. Now, movie novelizations really get a bad rap, you know, because um, they are books that are based on somebody else's work, usually a, a screenplay, all right? But they are very near and dear to me. I really like them. And I have quite a few of them, and I want to show, show them to you. Before that, let's define what is a movie novelization. A novelization is when um, an author is hired to make a novel from a screenplay, meaning the screenplay that is used for the movie, that one is used to make a novel and publish it as a novel. All right. Of course, tying into the movie itself, so it, it one will promote the other. All right. That's different from a movie tie-in. Let me show you what I mean. Here we have uh, The Hunger by Wheatley Strever. Now, as you can see by the cover, and also by the back cover, right there you see photos from the movie. Here you see a photo of uh, Catherine Deneuve, who is in the movie. But this is not the script for that film. This is the original novel by Whitley Strever, Strever upon which it is based. And they just re-released this novel with this movie tie-in cover and back cover. All right. Sometimes they will take uh, um, the universe of a movie and make several other stories from it. Star Wars is the most obvious example. Here we have The Truce at Baccarat. This is not based on any screenplay or, or any uh, movie. It is just its own original work. And uh, this is, in fact, the first uh, novel after Revenge of the Jedi. So if you're really wondering what happened directly after Re Revenge of the Jedi, this is the one to read. The Truce at Baccarat. It's a pretty good read. Another example of that. Here we have a, a movie tie-in novel for the TV series Fringe. Here it's called uh, The Burning Man. This one focuses on the um, Olivia Dunham character. I believe there were three of these made. All right. Very well. But now let's get on to the to the novelizations. The oldest one I have here is this one for Forbidden Planet, the classic science fiction movie. There you go. There's a some a photograph from the film. There you have Robbie the robot. This one I got one on eBay. I do own the film on Blu-ray and also have the soundtrack for this movie. Here we have Airport 77. Haven't read this one, but I have seen the movie. Got this one at a, at a thrift store, I believe. Whenever I see a, a novelization, you know, wherever, I pick it up. Airport 77. This is not the first airport film, of course. This is the one where the, the, the plane goes underwater and they try to rescue it. Here we have a, a Tilt. Uh, this is based on um, a movie uh, by with Brooke Shields when she was very, very young. It may have been her first or second movie. It's a movie where she is a, a pinball hustler. You know, she's a, a kid who's really good at, at uh, playing pinball. She goes around hustling people, you know, betting, betting on pinball games. There you go, Tilt. You know, back when I was a kid, I was fascinated by pinball, even though I was not never very good at it until uh, I became an adult. Then I became a, you know, uh, a bit more handy with pinball. And of course, everybody had a crush on Brooke Shields back then, as well as Jodie Foster. Here is a novelization for Carney, a movie, uh, one of our very early films. I believe from, let's see, 79, yes, where she joins a traveling carnival. Gary Busey is also in this movie. What's cool about this particular novelization is that this uh, cover is was made specifically for the novelization, so this is not the movie, the movie poster. All right, so that's um, pretty cool that way. I believe, like for instance, in the case of, of Tilt and uh, Airport 77, and these, these images were included in the movie poster. Now we go here for Planet of the Apes. Now this is not a novelization. This is the original uh, Pierre Boulle novel, which of course was uh, written in French, in its original French. This is the English language version, but it is a movie tie-in, which has that uh, images from the movie. I have read this uh, this novel and it's pretty good. And um, even though this is one case where the movie is much better than the book. 
All right. Though when I read it, I did not read this particular this particular edition. Like I said, this is not a movie, movie novelization. This is the original novel. These that I'm going to show are novelizations. Here we have Beneath the Planet of the Apes, the sequel, which I really like. I've seen all of the Planet of the Apes movie, and I'm a big fan. Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Then we have Escape from the Planet of the Apes. After that, there is a Battle for the Planet of the Apes. And I believe this is the last one, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. All of these with uh, picture covers right there. Huge fan of the, of the series. I do own all of them on um, Blu-ray and on Soul and DVD. Here we have now the 1980s fantasy movie, Cruel, which I'm a huge fan of as well. A lot of people say this one is really cheesy. And it is, but, you know, I love it. Cruel. Great fun. A rare one here. The Wicker Man. Uh, one of the greatest horror movies of all time. Right there. I do have this one also on DVD and Blu-ray. Let's see what else we have here. We have the Swamp Thing. Okay, one of the very first uh, uh, superhero movies. Swamp Thing, and it's pretty good. I do also have own this one on DVD. There's Adrian Borbeau. And on the back cover, Louis Jordan, who, who does a great job as a villain. Swamp Thing novelization right there by David Houston and Len Wayne, who is a a noted comic book uh, writer. Another comic book uh, to the screen, we have uh, Judge Dredd here with Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone. A good movie, though not a good adaptation of the character. So the movie's pretty good. One more superhero, of course, Batman. There we go. The 1989 version with Michael Keaton. Written by uh, Craig Shaw Gardner. I'm going to put the, the, the authors and years of all of these novelizations, you know, uh, down here. So as not to make the video too long. One more comic book character to the screen, Constantine. I really loved this movie when it came out. Even though I was not familiar with the character uh, in the comic book, uh, in the comic books of this character, but I really love the movie. This is the one with Keanu Reeves. Bought this one new, still got the price there, uh, $6.99. Usually I, I don't pay that. I usually buy books used, you know. But this one, I really wanted to read it. The Black Hole, one of my absolute favorite movies of all time from, uh, I believe, 79. And the, the novelization here is by Alan Dean Foster, who has done many, many, many a novelization. Here. And I also, for this movie, I do have it on DVD, and uh, I have an extensive uh, collection of items from the Black Hole. I'll probably do a video of those as well. Here we have a, a rarity, which is um, a cat people. Here, this is a, a novelization by a Gary Brandner, which is the author of The Howling, as horror fans may know. Again, really good movie, this one. Got this one at, on eBay, I believe. And it's a rarity because it's on hardcover. Uh, most novelizations are usually on uh, paperbacks. This was in a, uh, in hardcover. One of my favorite movies. Here we have a more modern movie, Noah. Right there. A movie about the biblical uh, character and the flood. 
pretty cool movie. All right, of course, novelizations had their heyday back in the um, uh, 70s and 80s. They still do them, though, though not as much, you know, for modern movies. Here's another modern movie, Interstellar. Great science fiction movie. Another, this is my most recent uh, 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 purchase, which is uh, Solomon Kane. A novel by Ramsey Campbell. Based on the screenplay by Michael J. Bassett. Based on the character created by Ron Howard. Right, Solomon Kane. Got this at a dollar store, so it cost me only one dollar. Here we have uh, the novelizations for a miniseries, which is the Merlin miniseries, TV miniseries. We have uh, part one, The Old Magic, and the part two, The King's Wizard. There is actually a third one, which I don't have. But these are really good because they go into, uh, they tell a lot of stuff that is not told in the miniseries. And I do want to have the third one, of course, to have the trilogy complete. Novelizations are, are sometimes they make two of them, one, a normal one and then they do a kid's one, like this one. Here the Prince of Persia has a, uh, a junior novelization, which usually has, of course, a plenty of um, larger print and some pictures. Let's see if I can get those pictures in there. Here we go. This one is in Spanish. I live here in Mexico. And here is my a Spanish language edition of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Pretty thin. All right. Now, this last one that I'm going to show you is not a novelization, but it is um, a sequel to a novelization. This is Fantastic Voyage 2, right there. Uh, Destination Brain by Isaac Asimov. Now, Asimov wrote the novelization for the first the Fantastic Voyage. I don't have that one, even though I do have the movie on um, DVD and Blu-ray. But then he wrote a sequel to his own novelization here, Fantastic Voyage 2, where they go into the brain. Re I haven't read this one, so I'm looking forward to it. Okay, in fact, these are not all of my novelizations. I do have like two or three more around there somewhere. These are the ones that I could pick up right here. Uh, but these are pro probably most of them. Okay. Well, if you like this video, give it a thumbs, thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching and so long.